the application is from a Brookhaven 3 Lake Park Limited Partnership. They are requesting to rezone 5.67 acres that are located at the northeast corner of Lake Boulevard and Country Lane. Uh, they are asking to go from a community, <coughs> uh, community commercial to an R6 multifamily zoning district in order to permit the development of 64 80 restricted, uh, that's 55 and older apartment units in a total of three multifamily uh, buildings. Uh, surrounding this property, there's a mix of zonings of residential professional, R10 as well as CC zoning. Uh, the surrounding uses include a mix of office as well as institutional and residential uses. We have reviewed the application against the standards of zone, exercise of zoning powers 12-2.7c of the uh, zoning ordinance for the city of Lake Park. Um, and we have felt that uh, from a land use and zoning uh, perspective and standpoint that this is an appropriate land use given that this area is in a transitional uh, location between commercial uh, and institutional and then transitioning north to more residential uses. Therefore, our recommendation is for approval. Um, I will note that uh, late last week, it was brought to my attention that there are some concerns regarding drainage and other site issues in that area. Um, <clears throat> if this project is ultimately approved, those issues would have to be addressed through the permitting process. But I just wanted to make you aware of those, and with that, I'll conclude my report. Thank you. Are there any questions for the staff on the commissioners? Do you have any elevations here? Uh, no, sir. I have one other question. The massing um, building around this site, is there any other two-story structures in the area? Um, <clears throat> no. No. No, I don't no. believe Any other questions for the staff from the commissioners? I have a question. Um, on the future development uh, map, if they uh, regional activity center, would R6 be appropriate for a regional activity center? Would that be appropriate for future? Yes, ma'am. The R6 multifamily zoning district is permitted within the regional activity uh, center character area designation for the company. Right. And where, where is the nearest next zoning of our seat? <clears throat> I've got to take a look at it. I'm not sure if I know that right off the top of my head. It doesn't seem that there's any. East, that may be some arsenic zone in there. East of the lake. On the other side of the lake, correct? And that's what it appears, yes. Uh, uh, it's a little difficult to tell with this zone map in front of me. I'd have to have my digital map in front of me. Confirm that. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions for the staff? All right, there being none, I know we have a, a house full tonight, and we appreciate everybody coming out. Um, as we did state at the beginning of the case, we're trying to do fairness and equity to, to both sides of the argument. So we're going to try to um, be fair and give 10 minutes to each side. Um, so I'll now call those who wish to speak in favor of this request. Um, please approach the, uh, the uh, podium and state your name and your address. My name is Bill Holland. I'm attorney with uh, Coleman Tally here in town, 910 North Patterson Street. This, uh, this, this request is a senior living facility. Um, it's by IMG. They, they have approximately 50 of them now that they manage. As a, as a senior living facility, they are um, able to ensure who lives there, and they are able to uh, regulate who comes and goes on their application. They have um, some, some background checks that they do. There's one there's one in Hay Hiram now that they just put there. And um, I can encourage everyone here 
tonight to go maybe go to Haiti uh, and take a look at that facility. These facilities are a lot less uh, burdensome to this site than what could go to this site under, under CC now. If you look at uh, the CC zoning now, I think you could have a recreation facility. I can't list them all, but I looked at your at your zoning today, and it could be it could be something there that would be a noise problem, could be uh, a problem, you know, a lot bigger problem than a senior living facility. These facilities are are uh, not low income facilities. They are back with with tax bonds, tax credits. But the, the cost they're managed, unlike a conventional facility, the people that live there are, they have criminal background checks like a city. And they are 55 and old. And they are, they are respectable members of our community. We feel, like the staff recommended, this fits within the comprehensive plan this is a good use. We will certainly deal with whatever issues we need to deal with as far as drainage and those issues. This is a professional developer that has done this all of the United States and they know how to deal with those facilities, those issues from this um, I have with me today Melanie Farrell and Joe Chambers. They are, they are a lot more familiar with this project than I am. They can answer a lot more of the questions than I can. I feel like we got a lot of loops coming, unfortunately. But, uh, but we, from a zoning standpoint, we feel this property is, is a proper property for this project. And we feel this project will be something that will be advantageous to White Park community. Like I said, we're here, we're willing to answer whatever questions you can have. Are there any questions for the presenters from the staff and from the commissioner? Just out of curiosity, is this the same management company that's managing the ones there in Hayhire? Yes. It's, it's the same management company that developed the ones in Hayhire and are now managing. I have a question. Uh, the Hayhire Community Center is Any other questions for the presenter? If not, we thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? <clears throat> Joe Chambers, I'm project manager. Uh, Can you give us your address, please? For the, uh, 7537, Phoenix Lake Central, Lake Park, Georgia. The complex is elderly and with a two story, we put in elevators, and the buildings are connected so it will the people in all the buildings will be available for the elevators. We plan on like, putting in two elevators. We plan on doing a craftsman style, a very good looking style building. It will, uh, I think will complement the, the community. You know, but as far as isolated buildings and putting a single elevator inside each building, it would be too expensive to do. The site is too tight to put one story because we're going to leave the very front of Johnston Circle with the live oak trees. All the live oak trees will stay. We, we will not take down any live oak trees. And that will make the site very tight. So to be able to fit in individual buildings with an elevator, it, it would not be possible. 
The plan over there is like the one you did in High High with uh, great buildings and connected with the region. Did you say one elevator per building? It would be two elevators in between where the three buildings are connected. On the drawing, it shows two connected with the Our civil engineer just did not connect with the third building. We also put in exercise rooms, we put in a computer center, we put in a library, uh, and we put in a lot of amenities for the elderly. In, in a lot of places we put in community gardens if we have room. And, uh, we try to put in a lot of communities which will in, increase the uh, lifestyle of the elderly. They really are. Any other questions for the afternoon? Those are those uh, apartments you're talking about building there. What kind of entrance we're going to have? We're going to have a fence around it, a gated community, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it will not be a gated community. It will be we will fence the uh, community. Uh, in Hayhara, we put up against where the residential was adjoining. We put up a six foot solid vinyl fence, which would be for the low maintenance. And the rest of it was. Uh, a four foot uh, iron fence, uh, aluminum fence, and then a chain link fence that gets the back for the birds and rabbits. We, we try to make it a very attractive complex that will be a uh, con contribute to the community. Thank you. All right, if there are no other questions, uh, we thank you for your presentation. I think we have time for one more person to speak in favor of this request. All right, there being none, um, I will now hear from anybody in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request. I'm Dr. Glenn Tucker. I live on the Hammock Lake, on the lake itself. This area Can you give us all, your address, please? Uh, oh, your address? 18 Hammock Creek. All right, this area is all single-family residents. The only opposite, the only change on that is a nursing home located between right off uh, Spinkwater Drive. And that's everything, all the businesses on that are located within 50 yards of 376. Uh, Lake, Lake I speak in opposition because we have been there and we don't want to change their zoning because we have one change there on the corner of Daly Drive and Field Drive a few years back and the board later apologized to us at this room. Uh, they have three or four triplexes right facing uh, Fort Lot Lake, beautiful lake. Now both lake, those three or three or four triplexes are Isolates. They have three families per unit, and they're so bad that houses on both sides have worked in high fences to shoot. We don't like that, but I mean, that's the only multi family housing in that area. We have none of them over one story. I think with what we have now, if you change the zoning, that opens it up for other <coughs> low income housing. But we like to keep it the way it is right now. I've been there since the early 80s. We've donated the road, we've deeded the road there, have a trail to the county so they can open up the other areas in there across the street. All those houses are very They have taken care of them. Single families are proud of home. I am proud of mine. I don't want to see more people. I used to have to go down there and chase out people from the lake because they trespassed, left trash, and stuff like that. I can't go and try that anymore. Are there any questions for the presenter? All right, well, thank you for your presentation. Again, my name is Danny Hanus. I live at 5302 Golf Drive, right across the street from the Park of Park, Frank's Lake Subdivision. 
also have property on Hammond Lake. Also, the Ben Francis Lake that the church. All three of these properties basically join the site that you're considering rezoning. Uh, I was postmaster in Lake Park, for a postmaster in 1984. I served 21 years as postmaster there. I watched the whole end of that county grow, and we grew with them at post office. So I've seen just about every possible scenario that can happen in places like this. We have several apartment complexes down there now, and uh, uh, there's been some, a lot of things not becoming to a community around those apartments. I mean, a lot of them are low income, and uh, at least they're isolated. And, you know, our subdivision was built in 1971, and Hammond Lake was built about the same time. And all of us built homes there, and you talk about three beautiful lakes, Francis Lake, Four Plot Lake, and Hampton Lake, or two Hampton Lakes. And I mean, what I would ask y'all to do is just consider, you living in a subdivision that's been there since in the 70s, you just consider how you would feel if someone was to put 64 apartments basically right in your midst two-story building with lower income housing than what those other communities are. The property values would go down, crime, vandalism in that area would escalate as has already been proven in the other uh, apartment complexes in our area. And you know, I just like to, uh, the same God that we prayed to earlier, just consider how he, you would like to be treated by him and you, you know, try to free us the same way, but I mean, you know, we value our community, and we would like to keep it like it is. And again, I don't think anybody in this room, especially in a nice subdivision, with one of a bunch of apartment complexes that's dumped in right in front of yard because of you. Not only your safety would be compromised, but your property would be compromised in value as well. That's all I have to say. Are there any questions for the presenter from the commission? <clears throat> We thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? I mean, in opposition of this request. Don't Drive. Also, Pastor Francis Lake Baptist Church. If I have your permission, I'd like to uh, hand to the board member. Uh, a copy and sort of to guide my presentation. That's fine. If you would start them down here and we'll pass them down. Well, she's passing those out if I should have. I'll go ahead because of the time. We're encouraging you to deny uh, this request for the changing, uh, change of zoning. I, I'm here to represent uh, Francis Lake Baptist Church congregation, also Gates McDade, who uh, lives right across from where this development is on Fort Lot Lake. And also for myself as a homeowner, less than a block away uh, from the development. I have petitions in my file here of 81 resident members that attend our church, and these are all adult uh, members. They're not, they're not children signing uh, the, the petitions. And I'll tell you this, I stand before uh, hundreds of people every Sunday, and I'm standing before you and I'm scared to death. <laughs> and so I, I, it's, it's quite a different environment. And so, but I, I, I will proceed. But I've been a part of the Lake Park community now for 43 years. Uh, I'm going to go back a little further than uh, Mr. Gaines. Uh, I led in the establishment of uh, Francis Lake Baptist Church, and we were the first development uh, in the area. Uh, it's my understanding that the zoning and uh, uh, the zoning board and the zoning uh, ordinances are intended to protect neighborhoods, uh, property values, and to develop the area in an orderly fashion of uh, protecting the citizens of our, our county. We therefore would like to go on record as opposing rezoning from CC to R6 multifamily. Doing so uh, would be a, a huge uh, department, uh, departure from the intended uh, our intention that Country Johnson had when he developed that area, and of course making statements to me and to several others that we just never want apartments in this particular area. 
uh, because it would uh, decrease the, uh, the property value. Two-story buildings would be unsightly in the area. That's been planned for single-family homes, and of course we know that uh, out by the 376 that there's commercial de development there. And uh, you know how will these buildings look five, 10, 15, 20 years from now? If you'd like to see what the Hammond Lake apartment will look like now, I got pictures of them, and it's just uh, it's just a wreck there. And that's uh, an eyesore to our community. You know, we love the folks that live there. And of course, we, we're concerned about people having a place to stay. And so all, we ha all you have to do is take a look at the other apartment complex around and see what's happened in time. Now, these two-store apartments are, are uh, you know, there for 55 and older. I understand tonight that there will be a couple of elevators, and that's good. And, but what about sidewalks? Uh, what about the uh, age uh, limit in, in time, if those apartments don't fill up? Mm -hmm. What about the, uh, all the school children that will be dropped off with grandmother, and if I live there, I'd expect my children to be dropped, or grandchildren mm -hmm. to be dropped off uh, in the afternoon? You know, it's the fact that the property values will decrease uh, in the area, especially on Horse Lot Lake. Uh, if you'd like to have uh, that big property right across the road, well, you know it would it wouldn't be very valuable after this. Uh, I believe that the uh, value will also decrease in uh, Hamlet Lake, uh, uh, Springwater Drive, where I live, and also in the sub subdivision between the two lakes. Uh, we know that the uh, Francis, Francis, from experience at the Francis Lake Apartments, especially in the afternoon about night, is loud over there. You know, I live uh, a distance from it. The uh, AME uh, Cemetery is between us. But sometimes you think that something awful is taking place with all the racket and all the noise that's going on there. And any time, any given time you have a, a large gathering of people, you're going to have disputes, you're going to have more crime. And the development will really cause a demand on the Lake Park Police Department in settling these disputes. You know, the, uh, I know from being there in that area, some of the most serious crimes that have been committed in our area have been related to apartments, if you go back to the rest residence of those apartments. Now this de development will cause serious damage to the environment. You know, there's runoff, and I know there's a plan for retention pond, but when those uh, ponds, uh, that pond fills up, the runoff has got to go into one of those lakes down there. And uh, a horse lot lake, if any more water is turned in there during a storm, is going to flood those property owners. I was on the property this afternoon, and I I can bear witness to that. Our congregation is also concerned about vandalism, about the walking traffic across the, the property. We already have a, a good flow of traffic, uh, especially with the well-being of our children, our children programs at the church. An increase of a uh, number there and walking across the property is going to force our church to probably have to fence two sides of the property. We don't know what the expense would be. The traffic would be a, a nightmare going in and out on the curve over there. And, and uh, of course, endangering the lives of the uh, folks, uh, our neighbors in Baptist Village, I have some of the best neighbors you'll ever find. And those folks may not work, uh, walk out there when it's cold, uh, winter, wet weather, but they walk. And that's their walk path. And the more tra traffic you put in there, uh, it's going to endanger those lives, as well as the, the noise problem and and folks, of course, trying to go to the post office to take care of business is going to, to affect them. We already have enough lighting around our residence, and I know with uh, uh, apartment uh, parking, uh, it's going to be hard to, to ever see sundown come about because uh, of all the light. Also, there is ample apartments in the area. I don't think anybody is uh, desperate to find an apartment. Uh, I have listed here seven uh, apartments in the area already. Now, who's going to benefit uh, from these apartments if they're built? It's not the community. It's not the citizens. You will hear from all the citizens. We have a lot of citizens here tonight. I have, again, a, a petition of, uh, of members of our church that attend our church. It's, uh, it's going to cost considerably for the city of Lake Park, the cost of fire, police protection, and, of course, reducing the value of the property is going to reduce the Thanks, uh, income also. And something I will ask the City of Lake Park 
tomorrow night is, you know, what about the feelings of your neighbors? You know, when you push things in right beside them, how, how's that going to help the, the community uh, to work together? And so since there are plenty of apartments already available in the area, it will only mean, in my opinion, money to the developers. Maybe in the form of tax credit, but that's, that's what it's all about. It's not about helping our community. It's not about making our lifestyle any better. It's a matter of money. And so we ask you to consider the residents who live there and we urge you to not change the direction of our community, our beautiful community with such a safe neighborhood. And we urge you to deny this rezoning on David Drive and Country Lane and the street that uh, Johnson Way that runs right behind my house. And I appreciate your consideration. <clears throat> Thank you. Are there any questions for the presenter from the commissioners? <clears throat> there being none, we are a few minutes over the allotted time. Um, I will take one more speaker if they have something to add to um, the three previous speakers did not get a chance to say. My name is Steve Walker. I live at 50218 at uh, I'm also the Secretary of the Hammond Lake Association, and I'm here I'm representing the directors and our property owners. I, I won't go over all the things that everybody else has said, but I do want to let you know that I went out yesterday and spent about four hours canvassing our neighborhood. I spoke to about 40 different households in that neighborhood, and I have signatures from most of them. I only had one person in the entire neighborhood who did not want to sign the petition. Uh, everyone is concerned about these apartments. We feel like it's not the appropriate use for this property. Uh, some of the concerns that you say need to be addressed after, um, afterwards are some of the concerns that I've heard. Uh, traffic is a, is a big concern. Right now, even trying to turn now um, left on Lake Fuller from day to drive uh, can be very hazardous because of the increased flow on this boulevard, I think it would be impossible if you added another 600 households to that entrance. Uh, the, the lake uh, directly across the street is in danger of flooding on flood water and, and runoff. And when you add that much concrete, there is no room. And our neighbors are very concerned about um, the, the increased, um, the increased traffic, the increase um, uh, people coming in and out, and, and we are very, very concerned about our property values. We feel like that's something that, that only you can protect for us. Any questions for the If the three structures were one form, would you still be in opposition? Yes, we are. Um, we're in opposition to that. All seen the family housing, all that neighborhood, and we don't have a chance there. <coughs> One other question? Yes. Uh, those people that were going to sign, those 40 people or however many, uh, did, did you guys ever, pardon my knowledge, but did you ever meet with the builder or what have you? launch this. I actually did not realize that the intention of the of the proposal the zoning until Saturday morning, so no mm -hmm. I have not met with the property owner. Well do you know of if anyone had, had met with them I'm saying trying to uh, have some type of resolution some some type of way. Yeah. Uh, we, I do not know if anyone has, if, if the commission prefer that we do that before the termination no, is made. No, no, no. I, I, I merely asked, this is for my own information. Yes, sir. Uh, it's not that, 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 uh, because sometimes uh, you can work it out. Rarely, but sometimes you can work it out. Yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you. All right. I am now going to close the public participation portion of this uh, application. Sure.
Well, we have gone over the, the more of a I'd like to say something, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Um, I'm sorry, I've now closed the public participation portion of this because we, we've gone over the amount of time. We, we've tried to allow 10 minutes for both sides. I think we've heard enough from both sides. I'm going to close the public participation portion of the commission. These names, these, these homeowners, they want to be represented. They need to be spoken for. We're not speaking for ourselves. We're speaking for these people. I have their names. You have a welcome to Gothic. Okay, please understand when we opened the meeting up, we said we have 10 minutes for each side. We gave 10 minutes for those who want to speak for the case. We actually gave 20 minutes for those speaking in opposition. So we're actually leaning over towards the ones who spoke on opposition. We've heard from both sides. We pretty much have been saying the exact same thing. We are a recommending body only. Remember that we are a recommending body only. This will we'll vote one way or the other, then there will be a case tomorrow that will be the final hearing on this. So, if you do not get a chance to speak tonight, please take time to go to the meeting tomorrow, which will have the final determination on this particular case. We are a recommending body off of the land use only. So, I'm sorry if everybody did not get a chance to speak, but we are closing this public portion of this application, and we will now go for discussion amongst the commissioners. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I have a suggestion that might be helpful. Um, this is a recommending body only. You are not the decision makers. If the folks in the audience want to submit a petition or some written stuff into the record for this meeting, perhaps that could be submitted to Carmella. Um, but otherwise, perhaps it would be beneficial for the folks here to submit their things to the Lake Park City Council, who will be making the decision tomorrow night. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. If you have some information that you would like to speak to send to Carmelo, uh, we will have to put that in the records. Or if you would like to take that to the City of Lake Park's uh, meeting and present that information there. What if we have a copy no. for you, if you want, as well as an original? Would you like to have the copy of these 19 people that I represent, that I burned my shoe leather, and they took their time and trouble to sign this petition against this change? Okay, sir, I'm, I'm sorry that you did that and you're, you're out of order right now. But I'd say that I would allow you to turn this information into Torcomelo. I understand you have 19 signatures. We have 40 signatures from one and 80 something signatures from the other. So you have a lot of signatures. We understand that completely. If anybody would like to turn this information in, you're more than welcome to do that. We well, now open a discussion amongst the commissioners. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. As commissioner, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to do something. I would like for every one of the commissioners here to be able to recognize the people that's out there and i would like to do a poll for and against we, that is not order we do not do polls for and against we are a recommending body only um i do appreciate uh -huh. everybody's time where, where is where is that in our minutes that we don't do polls <laughs> i'm not trying to be rude now. the staff may address that um, you have standards for exercise zoning power. You have the procedures and requirements that are spelled out on the Lake Park Zoning Ordinance. It is not a democratic vote or a poll of all members or all people present in the room. If people want to stand in support, that is fine. But it is very dangerous from a legal process to note numbers of people in the room in favor or against. Um, that is not relevant to your decision. That is for the chairman. All the side. I'm not going to authorize going to poll. I would like to have any other discussion amongst the commissioners. I just want the commissioners to see how many people are for and against those apartment because just everybody needs to have a voice. Even if it's not in a written, they need to be able to stand up or sit down. I know that's the way we did it when I was the mayor of the city of Lake Park. When I could not take everyone's questions, I'd always. Okay, okay. And, we're, and we're not a political body. I'm not a politician at all. No. I, was, I was not elected. I'm not going to say it. Yes, you're a politician. So, <laughs> you are the man who's the case. So, therefore, the politicians will meet tomorrow and then decide how this is going to go forward. You'll be wishing they had to put me on here one time. <laughs> so is there any other discussion about the commissioners? I would just like to say a few things, and I appreciate people turning out more often than not when we set up here to make decisions, not a soul out there. Uh, 
can't say that tonight. There's quite a crowd, and we appreciate that. And I appreciate the input. We have over in Hay Hyder, I have to live in Hay Hyder, we have these departments. In fact, we had two go around with them. Once they tried to put them in a residential area and it was turned down, and then they moved them out a little further away. And they're very well managed, very beautiful. And but I can understand things like the traffic <clears throat> and the aesthetics of a two-story in a residential area, particularly with a lot of lakes and things like that around. I can empathize with that. I don't agree, being a senior citizen, that uh, we create high crime areas. Uh, my days of committing crimes are pretty much behind me, and, and I think most senior citizens are. I think that was a bit of a stretch. But uh, I think it has raised some very good issues and presented them very well, and I appreciate that. But uh, those are, are very well-managed departments, I, I can tell you that. You know, personally, I just don't think they belong in that particular area where they're trying to put them in, and that's going to be my Please, 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 please let's, don't, let's don't do that. That would be my recommendation to the council when the time comes for recommendations. But, uh, I guess I just took a little on the high crime area. All right, any other discussion amongst the commissioners? So I'd like to follow up also, um, Mr. Ray, for that. Um, I know we are recommending what the command use, so the function of the, the property, perhaps the function might be acceptable, however, the, the based on the density and the building massing, and the development, the proposed development, the location of the buildings on the site does not seem compatible with the existing surroundings. There ought to be a transitional buffer between the residential areas and uh, what is being proposed. Uh, so it seems that that's lacking in this proposed plan. And based on that, I would, um, just like Mr. Raper here, I think a, a better site, a better location.